Hello, and welcome to another Discussing Fitchburg Now show from the virtual studios at FATV, the Worker Credit Union Virtual Studios. I have with me today Paul Migliozzi, Fitchburg's newest published author, who published a new children's book called We're No Angels. Thanks, Paul, for coming on. Oh, my pleasure, Sam. Good to be on again. Yes, yes. Last time um, we were talking about the St. Joseph's Church Fair, and you that had is... mentioned you were writing a children's book. That's right. You have a good memory. Yeah, well, time flies when you're having fun, and uh, <laughs> the children's book is now published and available for sale. Is that right? That is. It's available through a physical book, hardcover, softcover, uh, at Barnes and Nobles. Uh, and it uh, also can be purchased through Amazon uh, and uh, also at uh, as a Kindle and Fire. There are also ebooks formats, Amazon for Kindle and Fire, uh, Barnes and Nobles for the Nook, the Apple iTunes Store, and Google Play. You've, and got, you've got it all. You got it all. I got it all. And uh, it, was, it was hard work. It was oh, hard work. I so, so this story, this is a children's book, and yes. it's, it's illustrated, it's written, it's written by you, and the rough illustration was done by Joe Payne of Lemonster, correct? That is absolutely correct. Every word is mine. And, Sam, it was published and printed in the United States of America. I like that. Yeah. Yes, That's, I we do. Need, we need more of that, Paul. Yes, we, we do. Absolutely. <laughs> So it's a children's book, and it's it's geared towards the ages of about approximately two years old to about ten years old. Yes, that's correct. A yeah. great a great book for grandparents to read to their grandchildren, or parents to read to their children. Especially nowadays, where you stay home to stay safe. Great yes. book. Yep, right? and reading and reading is absolutely crucial. So, so why don't you tell us about what this story is about? Okay, this story is about three all-American girls, ages four, seven, and nine. Two of the girls are sisters. The third girl is a close, very close neighbor, and uh, they travel or they spend their spring school vacation camping, or more specifically tenting, in Acadia National Park, which is in Bar Harbor, Maine. Okay. And so, as you might expect, their newfound freedoms and uh, uh, prevail over the law, the rules and regulations of the park, and their unbridled curiosity gets them into trouble. Uh -oh. gets them into trouble with neighboring tenters and camps with the animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you've been tenting or camping, which I would recommend to every parent, what a great experience. It's very familiar. The stories, the episodes are very familiar, and uh, it's very enjoyable. So a little bit of mischief? Much mischief. <laughs> well, you've been a little girl. I mean, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, you yourself, you get this sudden dis surge of freedom, and, and you go running all over the park, and you see all these tents all these colors and shapes and all of these smells, the smoke coming up, like, you know, you, you want to run around. So you're running through people's campsites and they knock down the clotheslines and, you know, things like that. It, to us, it's not egregious, it, not serious transgressions, but to at another perspective from the people that are there, from the animals that live there, it is serious. So there are, to the to general look. children mischief. I got to pick up what you put there. Innocent, Sam. It's innocent, okay? And there's <laughs> no reference to killing or murder. We don't kill any aliens or animals, uh, anything like that. That would probably be uh, not a children's book. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a very wholesome book. And it's, great. Well, it, it's great for grandparents as well as children that are learning to read. So... Yeah, it, and the illustration looks looks really looks really cute too. Uh, it was uh, it was rough illustrated by Joe Payne in Lemonster, and then uh, your your publishing company, Page Publishing, 
kind of took that to a digital art level, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. The whole the whole format gets changed to a PDF, and and um, it it took almost it took almost a year and a half to put it all together. To put it all together, uh, there was some uh, complications because of the pandemic, and uh, that slowed down production. But uh, and it's still not quite complete. They're still completing some of the eBooks. Uh, through the, those vendors, but it is available online. The physical books are available online, and uh, it's uh, it's it's quite a challenge. You might think yep. it's simple. You might think, think it's simple, but it's not. Writing a children's book, you might think, oh yeah, anyone could do that. But actually, a year and a half worth of work. Every word is my word, and like I said, Joe was a great help to me, and he made the image reinforce force the words. Uh, the, the images reinforce the words. You need great illustrations in a children's book, as you obviously, as well as a great cover to attract people in the first place. And an interesting story so that when you read it to your children, they can be like, <gasps> Exactly. But you need to know what you're writing about, okay? Mm -hmm. You need to know the subjects. You need to, the subjects, incidentally, two of the girls are my granddaughters. Uh -huh. so are the are they, are they your granddaughter's names? The, the grand, I gotta use different names. My granddaughter's real names are uh, Layla and Thara. But they are, uh, in the story, they're called Laura and Chrissy. I had uh -huh. to change them. I don't want them but, to. So, was, uh, so were your granddaughters the inspiration towards writing uh, your, not, you know, your first book as a children's book? Well, as it says right here on the first page, this book was inspired and dedicated to our two beautiful grandchildren, Layla and Farah. So yeah. they are precious to us, my, my wife and I. So that's, that's who inspired the book. And have, you, very, have you thought about writing any other books? Uh, or, you know, have you been thinking about writing a children's book for a long time? What, what uh, you know, what kind of got you to, to actually go through with it and do it? I think my second book is going to be about you. <laughs> and your environment and all the people that you interview and all the stories that you have. Uh, I, I'd like to see right now, I, I'd like to see it come to fruition altogether. I'd like to see some kind of uh, compensation, financial compensation first. I, I didn't write the book uh, as a, um, as a money maker. I, I just want to recoup some of the finances, some of the expenses. And most people don't realize that it, it is expensive mm. uh, and, and it is time consuming. And uh, it, the, the most difficult part that I experienced, uh, the most difficult phase is marketing the book. Mm. Produce the book, you have someone make the book for you, the producer, uh, the publisher, I should say. Yeah, put it for sale. It there, you have to go out and sell it. So are you going to do book signings and those kinds of things at like our local Barnes and Noble and other places? Well, that was my original intent. I, I intended to go to Barnes and Noble to have book signings, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, appear at uh, Christmas fairs. Um, and all, then COVID. Yeah, COVID and the fairs, you know, how many fairs there are. COVID swooshed all of that. I, I the, uh, I'm not having... It, public appearances have been curtailed. You can't have uh, signings at Barnes and Nobles. Um, and so most of the marketing is through social media and online sales. Mm. It's tough. It was I, something that no one really anticipated, but it's, I'm still alive. Yeah, it's, it's life. It's life oh, now. You and everybody else. <laughs> so uh, the book, so the book is available. So I saw the book online, yeah. and you can get it in paperback for fourteen ninety five, or you can get right. it in hardcover for twenty four ninety five. Right, that's correct. And uh, I was going to say that. Uh, oh, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, oh no! You. What were you going to say? <laughs> uh, I was going to say, you know, marketing is not my forte, but. 
my wife Judy helps me out quite a bit. And initially, your friends support you, parishioners support you, relatives support you. I think gradually as you reach that peak, it depends on social contact. Yep. Through, through the meal. So that's that. Yep, and going on TV, you know, prolific TV shows. Oh, exactly. You know, that's exactly. the next step. The big time the TV shows. The media. So <laughs> you, know, you go to television stations, newspapers, et cetera, radio, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the story of camping at Acadia National Park was this uh, something that you did with your granddaughters. So, what was the inspiration behind that particular story? Okay, like I said, you you have to know the environment. You have to know what you're writing about to some degree. So, I am very familiar with Acadia. We've taken our children uh, to Acadia. All three of our children camping, tenting, uh, biking, hiking, you name it, annually for the past forty years. 40 years. Judy, wow. my wife, and I are honorary uh, senior rangers. So we love the park. The park is a great place. It is a, a, a natural wonderland. And, uh, you know, I would recommend that for all parents. It creates memories that are indelible. You'll never forget them. And then yep. some of them end up in a book. Yeah, hopefully they the story inspires others to go camping because it's a great it's a great low cost family activity especially you know in today's times it's it's Absolutely. kind of perfect so you run into uh, some acquaintances skunks raccoons <laughs> acquaintances chipmunks etc cetera, etc cetera. and if you've been camping you know that you will run into some skunks especially mm. if you're a little careless and you leave food hanging around you mm -hmm. do raccoons. Like even at home Mm -hmm. And so the yeah. raccoons will knock the pants and pots and pans and knock your bikes over and you, you look out the door and you see these little flashlight eyes looking at you. Well, it was your fault. This is their home. <laughs> this is their territory. They want to come out at night and uh, scout around and investigate their territory. They you know, know you're going to leave all the carelessness for the human being, of course. Okay. So... So, uh, you know, getting to uh, talking about publishing your book. Yes, yes. Um, so, you know, what what kind of uh, words of wisdom do you have for maybe people at home that want to be Fitchburg's next newest, pub next newest published author? How do, you, uh, how do you get involved with actually contacting a published company? How do you okay. start with the book? First of all, everything comes from up here. Yeah, okay. And your, all your emotions have to be controlled by reasoning. So think about something that you're capable of doing. Number one, uh, write about something that's familiar, that you know about, that you can begin with facts, but you can you know, extend the facts, exaggerate them a little bit, and then embellish on them. And uh, if it's gonna be a children's book, you have to have skills to illustrate or find someone to illustrate. You have to reward those or compensate those illustrators. And then you have to submit, you write your story and it becomes a manuscript. You submit, you look through online, get some ideas of what publishing company would you like to use? It could be random, uh, candlestick, oh, there's so many of them, Penguin, and uh, Page offered a good package for me. Uh, self-publishing. Uh, I submitted my manuscript with the rough sketches, the illustrations, uh, to three different publishing companies. I was accepted all three, but one. Page, uh, page Publishing rejected because they thought that the illustrations would not embellish or help my story. They mm. need to doctor them up a little bit. So they did. I went with Page. It cost extra for the illustrations, but basically they used Joe Payne's illustrations. They digitalized them and they colored them and it turned out to be some, I thought, excellent illustrations. And uh, so I went with Page. It took a long time to edit the manuscript. Uh, I, I thought, 
that it was good to start with. But when I transposed it to a digital format, there were some few errors made, you might say. So it took a while. Uh, know what you're going to write about. Write all that is within your skills. If you think you can be an illustrator, go ahead. But don't forget, illustrations in a children's book will sell the book. The illustrations are, are the magic. The illustrations will sell the book, exactly. exactly. And you need a good, now, when you can go, as soon as you apply, are you, you uh, uh, looking or exploring for a publisher, you will see on your phone, or you'll be contacted by many publishing companies, and there will be agents out there. They all want a piece of you. Mm -hmm. So agents will say, listen, Dr. Paul, uh, if you employ me as an agent, I will increase the chances of your book or your manuscript being accepted by a publishing company. Not all publishing companies will even look at your manuscript unless it comes from an agent first. So there's, everybody wants a little piece of you. So anyway, uh, that's how it happened. I said, no, thank you for the agent. I went directly to the publisher. They said, yeah, it looks like you have something good here. And they embellished the pictures. It turned out to be pretty good. I, I think it turned out to be very good. I recently con uh, was contacted by a marketing agent, someone else that wants a piece of me, okay? Mm -hmm. They said, Paul, we see that your book is on Google and uh, we would like to market it for you. Well, I said, that seems like a good idea. Seems like a very good idea. How much? Then the idea was <laughs> kind of soured a little bit after they put a price on it, Sam. So I said, Gee, you know, I, I'm going to try doing some marketing myself. And the first person I thought of was you. And Fitchburg Access Television. That's we got it. the We got the market on everything Fitchburg. So I said, listen, uh, I appreciate your offer. I said, but I'm going to try my own marketing efforts and skills first. And here I am. So the, 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 basic, problem, the basic problem is I can't make physical appearances because of the virus. That's yep. it. We got the Zoom. So <laughs> you're already a Zoom master now. <laughs> you're the Zoomer. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's it. So, I, you know, I'm hoping, uh, as well as everyone else, that this... Uh, pandemic will have a, a vaccine and we can all get back to somewhat of a, a normal life again. It's affected everyone to some extent or another, mm -hmm. right? So. Yep. We, we are all hoping for that, Paul. And, uh, and I can't wait to, I can't wait to read your book. What a great opportunity to get it in time for the holidays for Christmas. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It's a, it'll make a great gift, a great present. And uh, I would de definitely recommend it. And, what I've been doing, Sam, is for people that are buying the book directly from me, I've been signing it myself and then delivering it to them, mostly here and so there. So how can we purchase it directly from you so we can get the author's signature? Okay. The only, uh, one of the best platform uh, avenue uh, venues right now is Rietta Flea Market. And so I attend, uh, this weekend I'm going to start, Sunday, to have That's my That's in Hubbardston? Hubbardston, Massachusetts, Rietta Flea Market. And uh, I will have my own table set up with my uh, books available for selling and signing. Hope to see you there. <laughs> That's Sunday mornings? Sunday from 7 to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Right. And right now, it, unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever way you look at it, that's the only uh, location that I'm able to, that I know of you know, to make an appearance to sell my books and to sign them at the same time. Mm. Well, so. best of luck to you, Paul. And for those watching at home, you can go to uh, the Rietta, Rietta Ranch. That's right. And thank you very much for offering this opportunity to appear in your show, on your show. Absolutely. And you can go, you can purchase the book uh, at the locations that Paul mentioned before, barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com. Uh, search for We're No Angels by author Paul Migliozzi of Fitchburg.
right. Thank you so much, Paul, for coming on and telling us about your new children's book. My pleasure. Thank you, Sam. Take care. All right. And uh, we will take a short break and then we'll be back on with Fitchburg Cultural Council and what is happening with the new grant applications coming up. Here we are, making strides together even when we're apart because our progress won't be put on pause. The future is a world free from breast cancer and that future is in our hands. And welcome back to Discussing Fitchburg Now. I'm your host, Sam Squalia, and the wonderful artistic crew that I have on with me now is members of the Fitchburg Cultural Council. We have Tamar Russell Brown, she's the social media chair, Eileen Berger, she is our grant coordinator, and then we have Audrey Pendleton Cho, the administrator of the Fitchburg Cultural Council. Thank you everyone for coming on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so the Fitchburg Cultural Council, uh, you know, the, the, one of the biggest cultural councils in the state, in Fitchburg, and we were uh, one of the top cultural councils in the state not too long ago. Why don't we talk about first what the Fitchburg Cultural Council is and what it does. So the Fitchburg Cultural Council is part of the Mass Cultural Council which is an entity that basically administers funding from the state level, from the government. What they determine is creative funding and it goes to the council and then the council works across the state with other councils that, that are set up in each town, each community to help to administer those funds and get them into the community and get them into creative projects. So we're definitely one of the biggest in the state, which is very cool. Um, we are all put in place by vote. Um, the mayor is the one who determines who sits on the council and it's a three year term. And so we're always looking for new members as well. People can get involved. They, the meetings are open to the public because they're part of town government in effect. So um, we're a great team of people who volunteer our time to get together to accept the funds from the state and then determine where they go. And sometimes we can work on our own projects as well. Yeah. So, uh, so members are appointed by the mayor and then confirmed by the city council. And the Fitchburg Cultural Council can have up to 22 members. How many members are on it right now? I believe there are 17 of us. Wow, that is huge. So are there any openings for any interested parties? Should people um, consider putting in their application to the mayor? So should I answer that, guys? I guess I could go for it. It's a rotating, you know, certainly the, we need people to want to be involved. Um, so as, as some people, their time served passes, we always need new rotating people involved. So if someone wanted to get involved, the best thing to do would be to attend meetings. And you wouldn't be able to vote at the meetings, but certainly you can be there and watch how things work. And then ultimately, if the our council chair and the group votes that they would like to have a person, then that person could then submit a letter and also the council can submit a letter to the mayor to get them on. And what I did, I attended a couple meetings and saw that it was a great thing to do. Mm. So um, I put my, uh, put my hat in the ring. And we appreciate it, Eileen. <laughs> All right, so your meetings are held virtually now due to COVID? And what's the what's the approximate schedule of your of your meetings? When did when are they held? Our regular meetings are held every third Tuesday of the month um, at four thirty p.m. If you check our Facebook, um, we try to update it with um, all of our open all of our meetings, um, events, and important dates. Uh, we also just started a Google Calendar that we're trying to be a little bit more proactive on that will have literally everything on there. Nice. So you can go to Fitchburg Cultural Council Facebook page and follow that and then you'll be, uh, you know, it'll come up in your feed of different events and you can check back in there. Yep. Yeah, the, it, it gets posted at the city level too, Sam, but I think it's a little easier for most people in the community maybe to find it, you know, on, the, on Facebook since a lot of people are there already. 
Yeah, I've been on Facebook, you know, once or twice. Yeah, you're you're like familiar with Facebook. Yeah. I've just seen it, you know. <laughs> so um, the big so the big task of the Pittsburgh Cultural Council is the grant season, and this year the grant season's been extended due to COVID. No, we've had to extend some um, many of the programs because of. COVID, but we're also working on our, right now we're starting to work on our fiscal 2022 uh, session too. So that's what we're putting out grants, grant requests for. Um, last year, we had about $40,000 from the state through the Massachusetts Cultural Com Committee Council for um, local artists and local programs. And we, I think altogether, we probably supported about a hundred artists who put on, you know, about 60 programs, um, wow. which will come toward as, as time goes on. We expect to do about the same for fiscal 2022. Uh, just to give you an idea with a great variety of programs that we go for, um, last year we had a, we funded a robotic STEM team at a local high school, a youth theater workshop, a blacksmithing demonstration. Blacksmithing is art. Uh, summer concerts, a break dance competition. I mean, I could go on, but they were all very different and very varied and very exciting, I thought. And unfortunately, they've been very postponed because of the uh, because of COVID. But um, although we don't know what the state budget will be, we expect it to be about the same. And so we're actively uh, now in the recruitment uh, stage, looking for grant and, and program proposals for the next fiscal year. Right, so, so grant season uh, in past years was started in September and ended in October. And this year, grant season starts in October, October 1st and yes. ends November 16th. Yes. yes. So it's yep. just been pushed one month. Yep. That, that's nice. We need all the time we can get. <laughs> and it's a really exciting time. So the thing for people to remember is that anyone could apply as long as it's a cultural, cultural something that benefits this town. So, you know, in prior years, we've had people from other towns apply for grants because they were coming here to produce something or perform something. Um, so that's relevant. If, it ha if it's something that's gonna benefit our community in any way, then that's something that people can apply for funding for. So we encourage everybody to get involved and apply for the funds. I think we're particularly excited about the open studio program because that enables us. This is a, it's been going on for what, three years, Tamar? And uh, this will be, this is the first year, this next year will be the first year we'll be handling it. And it allows us to bring attention to many smaller artists who wouldn't be able to fill a whole frame, but it brings you to their studios so you can see the vast amount of art that's going on in the town. Yeah, Fitch, I, I attended uh, Fitchburg Open Studios last year and they there's an, an awesome map that you can go around to people's different addresses in the Fitchburg area and see their studios, see where they work, see their art. I think it's very exciting. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And I'm excited that the Fitchburg Cultural Council voted to accept this project because um, there's a good group there. I mean, obviously it's a volunteer group, so that's why we always like more people to get involved. Um, but prior to this, it was just three people in the community that were running that. And you definitely need all hands on board to pull off a festival, which is basically what it is. It's like a two day festival in effect. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly there's potential in the future to make it bigger than it was. We had, you know, up to 34 or so locations last year, and that was up from the previous year. So we're excited, you know, it activates part of the downtown as well, which is necessary and we need that to happen. So I'm excited that that'll be a project for the council to manage next year. And certainly again, if anybody in the community wants to volunteer, we would be happy to have assistance and help on that too. So we're crossing our fingers for October, 2021, the Fitchburg Cultural Council sponsored Fitchburg Open Studios. Yes, yes. No. 
fantastic. And so, and when it comes to grants for local artists, uh, they can start applying October 1st and you can do this right online. It's an all online application if, at massculturalcouncil.org. You go to the local, local councils link and then find Fitchburg and the application is there. You can just go to mass-culture.org slash Fitchburg and that will send you straight to the Fitchburg um, local council and they'll show you exactly where to apply. And you can also apply to multiple councils. So if I have um, like a program I want to do at the, fit, at the public library, I could, uh, I could do that program at the Fitchburg Public Library and apply to the Fitchburg Cultural Council. And I could also do it at the Lemonster Public Library and apply for funding from the Lemonster Cultural Council and yes. et cetera. Absolutely. And we've, um, last year we funded uh, several projects that, um, or events that occurred um, at the public library in the senior center. And we had people apply from other towns too. It's really kind of interesting, you know, sometimes we determine if it really wasn't going to be in town, that it doesn't make sense for our council to fund it. But it, you know, we had, you guys can maybe help me out. We had like a storyteller who came from Western Mass somewhere and he came and he was here performing something, a presentation. And I think it was at the senior center, if I'm not mistaken, but he was from out of the town and he applied and he was funded because it really helps the, the town, someone in the town. And that's the concept of this is to help promote and support the culture in this, in this area, this little city. Yeah. So it doesn't so much matter where you're from, just as long as it's benefiting the, the Fitchburg people in some way, uh, in, a, in, a, in an art, cultural, science kind of community way. Exactly. And we have funded events that um, were occurring in Lunenburg and Lemonster because we know that Fitchburg residents go there too. Oh, okay. Perfect. So, uh, you, uh, so for people that think writing a grant, oh, I don't know how to write a grant. Oh, that sounds so complicated. Uh, you actually do grant writing information workshops as well. Yes, we'll have two workshops and um, we will, they, and we'll make it, we make it very easy for you. The grant itself, I, I'm a grant writer in my background and the grant application is not as stiff as many I've seen. And um, we, uh, through our training, we make it easy for you. You can call us, we'll answer questions. I mean, we do everything we possibly can to get everyone who wants to get involved, involved. So the yeah. grant training workshops are going to be virtual, kind of like we're doing now. And uh, you have two of them scheduled, Monday, October 5th at 6 p.m. And then Tuesday, November 10th at 6 p.m. And you can find those links to, um, to these online trainings um, at, on your Facebook page. That's correct. Yeah. And um, I wrote a grant last year. I um, applied last year. And it's a super easy um, process. Um, I think it was probably one of my first grants I've ever filled out. And it's more like a survey. Um, you just fill out your information. Um, but during the um, training sessions, we'll play a tutorial video and then answer any questions that people have. It sounds like a good idea to, to learn about it kind of before November 16th at you know 11.58 p.m. And you're like, oh, you're gonna put on that grant. <laughs> that's true, that's what people do. That's what artists do, they wait till the last minute. So we're, that's why we wanna get you know, as much information out in advance so that people have plenty of time. I can't blame <laughs> and then we put together a booklet that looks like this with all the grants and all the information and um, we go over it if, if we want to have people in to talk about the, their program we do that um, it's a very interesting process once again for any of those who are thinking about wanting to join our council yeah so um, you know the administering the grant, getting, getting the applications, letting everyone know about it, that's one process. But then after November 16th, 
everything gets put together and the 17 members, the 17 current members of the council sit together either virtually or whatever, multiple times over the course of uh, a few months to pare them down and determine who gets the limited amount of funding that we get from the state. Yeah, it's quite lengthy. I think that's the hardest, the most work that everyone puts in to this actually from, from being on the council. Um, it, thanks to Fitchburg State, they print all the books for us. So we have everything on paper, we can read them at home. And then we come to the meetings prepared and we review as many as we can in one session. We always stick to an hour and then we'll have to come back for another session until we get done. So that's definitely, um, it's nice to have a lot of different heads on board so that we're all thinking in different ways. You know, one person may not think something is, real, is valuable to the community and somebody else will bring something showing that it is. So it's a nice, it's a really nice way for people in the community to volunteer if they're interested in arts and culture. Um, that's the most work that we put in, which is the end of the year, um, which is a little difficult for some people. It's close to holiday time, but um, it's a nice process and you actually feel like you're helping the, t the city. Oh, absolutely. And, and um, you know, uh, this, this current Fitchburg Cultural Council is one of the, the most diverse um, cultural council I've ever seen. And also it's probably one of the most diverse councils in the city. And that really helps when you're looking at a, a, a whole host of different events and, and different um, opportunities. Well, we, I mean, may I make a statement? Uh, <laughs> we, we had a really good leader. Um, Joe, Joe Bowen was our chair for some time and, and uh, he, you know, I, so I, I had a gallery on Main Street. Aud Audrey had a business, has a business on Main Street. A lot of us, I had no idea what the Fitchburg Cultural Council was. I had no idea what the Count Massachusetts Cultural Council was, and I've lived in the state for years. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit about someone educating you, which is why we're so thankful you took us on today, Sam. Um, Joe was someone who worked very hard to come and find us, a lot of us, and he sort of handpicked us and said, you should get involved. And then once I realized what was all, it was all about, obviously my little world fit right into being on the council and i think a lot of us did actually you know we were thrilled to have eileen she's got grant writing background we could use that we have a lot of people who offer a lot to the council and so we would like to carry on with what joe left us with his legacy um we have a new chair now and so we're here to like educate the community you know that this exists it's a neat thing that the state of Massachusetts has and does, and it's a great way to get involved if you really wanna see some creative things happening in your town. So um, that's one thing I just wanted to say. He made a big difference, and I think a lot of us wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that little shove. You know, Sometimes you need someone to give you a push in a certain direction, and he definitely did that. So we're here to give the community a push. If anyone wants to be involved, get involved. There's room for everyone, so. Oh, absolutely. Joe Bowen did an amazing job over the, the last three years building the council. And now we have you guys to, uh, you know, to carry on the legacy. And in that note, we have a creatives meet and greet uh, coming up. Uh, it's a virtual meet and greet, as everything nowadays. But that is October 16th at 7 p.m. Why don't we talk about that? Well, we did so, this the first time last year, right? And um, we had it at the Fitchburg uh, Art Museum, which was huge. And uh, well, I was so, I was so impressed. Um, people came. All many artists came that we hadn't met before. Um, they talked about what they did and what their needs were. Then someone else would stand up and say, "You want to talk to me? I can help you with that." And we made a lot of partnerships during that. Um, so we'll see how this goes virtually. I hope it's the same kind of um, uh, group and civic, uh, what do they call it, uh, herd help. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, it's a how, how is it going to work? Sorry. How is the virtual kind of creatives meet and greet going to work? Tamar, did you want to go? I was going to let you go. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> so we, um, yeah, we wanted to really um, be about the artists. Um, and we thought it'd be really fun to kick off the event with an open mic 
showcase, show and tell kind of thing where um, artists um, or creatives can show off their work for um, a few minutes. Like it's more like a performance kind of thing. Um, uh, so uh, musicians can play music, artists can show off their artwork, um, people can talk about works in progress, works they've already completed, um, uh, as well as mention projects that they have ideas for, but they're looking for other creatives um, that can help them with it. Um, you know, say you have this great idea that would be awesome for Fitchburg, but you're not a painter or you're, you're, um, you have no idea how to construct something like this. Um, hopefully someone in the meeting um, has those skills or they know someone who does. Um, and we plan to try to um, pair some people up and do some networking as well. So it's a, and it's a month before the deadline, so you got time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great platform where things can happen too. I think that was the, the concept last year was getting everyone together and seeing what they need because one group of people going, oh, I think we should do this for the community. And I think we should do that without actually asking the artists what they need it doesn't really you're just shooting in the dark you know so putting everybody together and going how can we help you what do you guys need um was part of the process last year and so we're hoping everyone will show up on zoom and and work with us this year to do the same process and one thing i want to mention is last year the uh, one of the things that we learned from a couple of very cool like almost games where we sort of got information from everybody yeah one of the things that everyone learned is that we need affordable studios here. Mm -hmm. So then with yeah. New View Communities has a stewardship program, which is another thing, cool thing to get involved with. And there's an art stewards group. And out of that group came the Arts Collective, which are a group that are, that are creating affordable, they're working on it. And I think it's gonna happen pretty soon, the, creating a place for studios, affordable studios. So that came out of our meet rate. So we're hoping this year, will have some similar results. Yeah, they have a number of grants that were um, um, awarded. And uh, actually, I got, I got reached out to ask to come and talk about it on a show. So maybe on a future Discussing Fitchburg Now show, we'll be talking about the new Fitchburg Arts Collaborative Space Plans. That's great. I'm glad. They're doing a good job. They're working hard. Yeah, and, th and to just to quickly summarize, that is would be like a community space where many artists could use one big studio or one space with multiple studios, something like that. Well, uh, we were thinking about, uh, I'm, I go, I am a member of the Rollstone Congregational Church downtown, right on the, the center square there. And uh, we're, it's a huge church, only a small part of it is a sanctuary. So we were talking about uh, housing some of the studios there during the, uh, on some of the artists there during the, uh, a certain part of the show. And I think, didn't the um, Universalist Unitarian uh, uh, Church also uh, put in a bid to do that as well? So what we're really looking at is maybe having the whole things, a lot of it centered right and down. So you can walk through town, you can uh, visit with um, the food places there and some of the other small shops. And, um, and learn about some of the churches we have in our town. That would be amazing, Eileen. And not to mention when the uh, Fitchburg Arts Community gets, gets finally completed uh, across from Fitchburg Art Museum, we will have an amazing cultural district application to put into the Massachusetts uh, Cultural Council for the, for the state. Uh, you know, we're, we're building on it. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's growing. It's very exciting, I think, for Fitchburg, with the with the uh, university as well being part of that. I think it all makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see. We we talked about we talked about everything that's going on pretty much. Could you want to talk about who the different members are on the cultural council? Like who makes up the cultural council? Audrey, you should take that one. If you like, I don't know. Uh, if you have give me a second. <laughs> yeah, our current, so the three of us are here and then we have um, Leandro is our new chair, but I think I'll let Audrey take that. Yeah, so our, our board members um, are 
Leandro Lopez is our chairman. Um, and He's an artist? Yes, he is. Um, I believe they have, uh, I believe he has a graphic design company called Leo C. Um, Jim Cragen is our treasurer. Um, our he was a teacher. Right? Yep. Um, Sean Goodlett is our minute taker. And um, our regular um, committee members, um, we have Angel Melendez, who's a um, student. Uh, Casey Taylor, who's also an artist. Um, Claudia Stevens. Jesse Olson, who um, works at the Fitchburg Art Museum. She's the event organizer. She's, um, uh, she's also part of the events and, sub, uh, events and social media subcommittee with Tamar, myself, and Leo. Um, or Leandro, um, Liano uh, Wetzel, Lola Hamill, Hamilla, sorry, um, Matt Brunn, Miriam Ruiz, Nayales Torres, um, and Thomas Costanz from um, Red Hot House Irons. Fantastic. And one of the great things I love about the new council is uh, the representative from Fitchburg High School, so that you know we can connect the high school with you know, what the, the larger, uh, older arts community is doing, correct? Yeah, I think we have, we would be open to meeting new students as well. So if there were any students that would be able to commit the time to come to the meetings, of course, now it's easy, it's from a computer. Um, mm -hmm. We would really be open to having a, some more from that demographic yeah. of the city. If anybody's interested, like, we would really love to talk to them as well as Fitchburg State University um, students. Um, yeah, we'd love for you to get involved with Fitchburg and the Cultural Council. All the more connections that we can make with all the different arts kind of communities within the city, because you know we, we're geographically not that big of a city, but we have such a diverse, uh, uh, amazing amount of different people doing different things. And sometimes we don't have uh, the communication between them that we, we really should have. And so having a, a diverse cultural council like, like you guys have, uh, being able to share information is absolutely crucial and will just help us just to push even further. Absolutely. That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, is, there, is there anything else that uh, you guys would like to add? Um, I'd like to highlight the um, great um, programs and events that the Fitcher Cultural Council has um, funded that you might not realize that we um, have partially funded. Um, obviously, we already talked about the Fitchburg Open Studios Tour. We um, funded their previous events, which by the way, you can um, also apply for a grant to pay for an event that happened during this year, um, which there might not be many of because of, you know, COVID. <laughs> um, but for future reference. Um, but uh, the No Evil Project. Um, Love that. Yep, the Fitchburg uh, Civic Days block party. We always um, help with funding for that. The summer concerts at Cogsaw Park, decorating Main Street um, during the holidays, Juneteenth celebration 2019. Um, this year, Juneteenth was virtual and was done by a separate organization, which uh, uh, I helped a little bit. Sam, you helped too. Um, yeah. It we was, haven't came discussed out whether or not we should uh, seek a <laughs> application for uh, this year, but we'll see. Um, uh, the Discovery Museum, they had a, um, they were seeking funding for the EBT $1 Anytime Admission Program, and we knew that um, Fitchburg residents um, could benefit from that. So oh, that's we nice. That well. um, the Fitchburg that's House in Board. Acton, the Discovery Museum? Yes, that's in Acton. It's the one with the dinosaur outside. Um, we've also funded the Fitchburg House Tours by the Fitchburg Historical Society, Concerts on the Common, uh, Winterfest, we mentioned the Blacksmith Arts and Renaissance Festival, um, the Children's Book um, for Fitchburg Public Works. Um, sewer, CC Sewer Cam? Yes, exactly, that one. <laughs> um, and also the uh, Fitchburg Farmer's Market amongst 
many others. Yeah, and at the farmer's market, they do like uh, musicians. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's the part that you would fund. Hmm. Pretty diverse group of things. You never, so for the community, it's good for them to know like how things happen behind the scenes. You know, a lot of people want to make things happen without funding and sometimes you need some help. And this is some help that comes from the state to make cool things happen. So it's a great, it's something great that this state offers our communities. So, so make sure to reach out to your state representative and state senators and let them know that the Massachusetts Cultural Council is something that we need and that we should keep funding and add funding to. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much everyone for coming on and talking about the Fitchburg Cultural Council. It's my favorite cultural council in the state. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for having us. <laughs> and uh, everyone at home, if you're interested in looking more at the Fitchburg Cultural Council, you can go to mass-culture.org slash Fitchburg, and that will take you to the Fitchburg local site, and you go to Fitchburg Cultural Council on Facebook. All right. And uh, thank you for coming on, and thank you everyone for watching at home, discussing Fitchburg now. <laughs>